Hello and welcome to Contemplations where we take a topic that isn't necessarily current news and we break it down because we think it is both interesting and valuable and I'm joined with Hugo today Hi. and I'm Josh and we're here to talk to you about um, the various voting systems and whether there is one that is particularly good or not. Yep and we're going to follow up on yesterday's discussion where we talked about how voting systems and electoral systems actually affect party systems and what consequences they have in politics. And right. so we we kind of agreed on that that party systems have or uh, sorry <laughs> that electoral systems have uh, quite a big quite a large influence on Absolutely, on the yeah. on the outcomes but in various ways so you can't say that it's a, a certain party or a, or a certain political idea or ideology that would that would benefit from it there are some systems from which uh, which mm -hmm. have characteristics that mean that some some number of large parties uh, benefit from that from from that of established parties benefit mm -hmm. from that system at the expense of of other parties that could challenge them so there are systems like that and but we'll we'll get into more detail mm -hmm. um what these systems are and what their drawbacks and advantages are yeah just to reiterate a little bit about the discussion um we did talk mainly about first past the post because it's used both in the uk and the us um india as well mm -hmm. um so a large number of countries in the world, and it's something that I feel particularly strongly about, <laughs> which is why why I, I was very focused on um, reforming this. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, and so the f the first passport system is is used in in many countries, uh, in the especially in the ang anglophone countries, mm -hmm. and it's actually not the not the type that is the most used the most used is the proportional system but that is a bit of a misnomer because there's loads of systems that are kind of under this one umbrella yes, it's definitely so, an umbrella term to exactly. represent a, a large number of yeah. various different proportional systems and so we're, we're kind of going to break down these 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 lines a little bit to, mm -hmm. to see what these systems actually are and what um whether it makes sense to group them together or not or according to what criteria and so if we if we want to answer the question which voting system is best, well then uh, we we have to establish according to which kind of baseline, right? We have to have some way of, of ranking them. And so voting systems, what they do is to take individual preferences because each individual has different preferences for for parties or for candidates, and they have their rankings in their heads of like preferences of one candidate over another, and like a, a list of candidates in 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 the order of preference and then those individual preferences have to be in some way translated into a group preference that then becomes uh, becomes what the election is gonna gonna result in the the actual representatives and that is the that is the crucial part because people have different preferences so not everyone will get what they want right and you have to some kind of mediate uh, between what people want and aggregate that in in some way that satisfies uh, at least at least some number of people and hopefully most people may, maybe almost all of them right but this is hard and this you can do this in in a number of ways so you have to kind of find the best way to crunch the numbers so that you can translate those individual preferences into that aggregate into that group preference that you want to um, that you want to then translate into uh, into electoral outcomes into those people in power and so what's what's the best way to do it well, actually, the the question is, what do you want out of it? Because because different systems satisfy different criteria, and so what are those criteria? Here you have the Wikipedia article that is a list of I don't know twenty maybe criteria that uh, you can have for voting systems, and I would like to go over a couple of those just to show what they are good for or, or what they what they actually do like why why would you care about those criteria and and then this th these criteria are useful for um for ranking those systems so when you say okay i want this criterion because it makes sense for me i want i want that to be uh i want my system to sat to satisfy that criterion because otherwise it, the result is not going to be a quality result and so so then uh, so then you can you can pick your electoral system based on the criteria that it, that it can fulfill. And so I want to start with the top criterion on this list, which is the Condorcet criterion, which is 
which is uh, mm, well the easiest way to to say what it is is that uh, you have a Condorcet winner. I'm going to explain what it is, and then if if a candidate if a candidate uh, if a Condorcet winner is selected by your electoral system as the as the winner of the election, then that that election the electoral system fulfills the Condorcet criterion. And so so what what is the Condorcet winner? The Condorcet winner is is a candidate among among several candidates that can win uh, that can win kind of had to had match with each other candidate. So you have candidate, uh, candidate A, B, C, D, for example, and a candidate A uh, will win uh, bit, uh, will win in a kind of fight against uh, candidate B and as well against candidate C and candidate D. So against any of them. So this is kind of the principle in which first past the post operates under where the candidate who gets the highest percentage mm -hmm. share of the vote is going to be the no, winner. No, 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 no. no, no. So, so, um, so, what the what the uh, voting systems do is to t take kind of rankings that people have of of those candidates, okay, and aggregate them in some way, right? And so, so, so that's the input. The input is a list of of preferences that e that each voter has of the candidates. So they have rank one candidate, rank two candidate, rank three, right? And and so that that's the list list of preference, and then. The Condorcet criterion is, is that if you if you take uh, if you take all those votes, uh, all those all those ballots, all those preferences, all those lists of preferences of, of all the voters, and look at only two candidates in relation to one another, then uh, then you want to see whether uh, they have more votes than the other, the other candidate. Right? So only those two, and so you compare A against B, and then you compare A against C and A against D. In, in those lists of preferences. Okay. And so if if candidate A can win uh, can win the the race against B if there were only those two candidates then then it it's uh it's going to say winner if it can do that thing against any of them. Okay. I don't know if I'm explaining it properly or not, but so if if people uh, vote in a preferential style mm -hmm. in that they have a list of preferred candidates, mm -hmm. the candidate who comes out as the most preferred from this list of uh, candidates that the voters have supplied, mm -hmm. it, it eventually becomes the winner. Uh, that would be the first part of post voting. Okay. So... So... so is it... Is it so first part of the post is, is, is just um, a system where the inputs are just across... Mm -hmm. in uh, near to like one name right mm -hmm. and uh, that's that that's kind of a special case because what what the whole input is is people's ranking and you can say okay I'm good I'm only interested in the top choice and then you you only you only collect the ballots with the top choice which is the cross mm -hmm. uh, but but if you collected the full information that that you can get from the voters that would be the the full the ranked, ranked order the okay, rank order yeah, yeah. right and so so if you have all of that information then that's what you start working it working with when you compare the electoral systems and and first what first pass the post does is that it ignores all the all the people that are ranked second or worse mm -hmm. and so so the Condors, the Condorcet winner is the winner that 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 can beat any other candidate, all other candidates in in a two-way race, right? So okay. so if you if you if you ignore all uh, if you did if you take all the preferences that that those people have, mm -hmm. and uh, if you were to remove all the other candidates and just take the the preferences of of candidate A and, and candidate B, then if if let's say candidate A is the winner. And then you did the same thing, but for and it, candidate A and C, and still A is the winner, is, is okay. the winner and I same with D. So if 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 candidate A where, wins in in each of these head to head matches, so, then they are the Condorcet winner. So in an example, if no matter what the electoral system, if there was a candidate that was so good that they could just beat anyone, no matter what the 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 electoral system was as in people's preferences were so unanimously in favour of them they could be described as the Condorcet um, uh, not not rega not regardless of of the election system because this is the criterion for for the election systems so 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 there, there are a lot of election systems that mm -hmm. that would not fulfil the Condorcet criterion which means that the Condorcet winner uh, 
which means that it is possible that the Condorcet winner would not win the election in with that electoral system. Right? So th that that okay. is what makes it a uh, what makes it that criterion. Right? So so it's a uh, so 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 that's a uh, that there's just one of one of those. Mm -hmm. criteria that, that you can have for for the electoral systems and so so another criterion that you can have uh, I, j I just picked the ones that i've uh, that i found the most um kind of interesting or maybe the most relevant or so, uh, those that you could take like the most um useful i guess us yeah useful for the for actually deciding how you want your representation mm -hmm. to look and so the other one that i'm gonna mention is the independence of irrelevant alternatives and so so that just means that if you have a set of candidates and you add another candidate and another candidate to the, to that set that doesn't affect the chances of the relations between the others sure right so 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 if you if you have candidate a and b and candidate A is ranked by the majority as higher than candidate C, and then you have uh, the, uh, candidate B, and then you have a candidate C that, that comes in. That that do, that candidate doesn't change the 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 fact that A is ranked above B. Sure. It, so it, it it doesn't this new candidate mm -hmm. doesn't detract uh, votes necessarily, or at least uh, to a point where the there's a shift between which candidate. Yep originally yeah. um was in the lead yeah and and these criteria are like strong so so it's not not like you can you can do one election and say okay it fulfills the criteria but uh, the the criterion it means that whatever the distribution of votes is that that is never broken right so mm -hmm. so this means that you cannot have any candidate however strong that would change the relation between those candidates that are already there Right, and so, so so first past the post obviously fails this test because uh, because if you uh, if you have a third candidate that comes in to exist in two candidates, well that that can can change the relation that can flip those two candidates. Yeah, because it splits the vote. Yeah, doesn't it? exactly. And so 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 that that's that's one important criterion I think, um, which which you can which you can have for your systems, mm -hmm. which is just saying that. If you have another candidate that wasn't there before, that can't change the the relations between the ones that were previously there, because those were decided based on the rank, the actual rankings of the people uh, of of the voters that that they submitted in the elections, right? And so, so a third criterion that I wanted to mention is the majority criterion, and that is very that is very simple. It just says that if a candidate is ranked first by more than 50% of voters the candidate must win which is <laughs> which is which is something that that uh, that is very kind of easy to formulate and it's much easier to explain than the first Would there even be an electoral system where this wouldn't be the case where where a candidate gets over 50% and then they're like well actually you don't win um we can we can look, we can look into into that later i don't know, know that from off the top of my head but i can i can it would it would seem at... very uh, counterintuitive to have any electoral <laughs> system where you get the majority of the vote and lose i mean you can um so you you could have for example uh Let's say let's say that you have a candidate that is quite polarizing, and that fifty five percent of people have as their first choice, and then forty five percent of people have as their last choice. Right? Mm -hmm. And then you have another candidate that is less polarizing, that is the second choice of ninety five percent of the people, right? Sure. And so you could you could say that uh, that an electoral system that would elect the second choice of ninety five percent of the people would be preferable to the one that that. Would elect the one that is the first choice of fifty-five, mm -hmm. if it's the last choice of the remaining forty-five, right? Yeah, so, so, yeah. so that sounds kind of more reasonable than than just saying, okay, if it's the majority, like that, she should be elected, right? So, I need so to that's... get my mind out of the first <laughs> past the post system thinking as someone who's not even in favor of it. That's... And, and so, and so that th that shows that this criterion is not necessarily uh, something that you need to take into account, right? None of these are. So so these are the criteria that you can have and you have to select those criteria that you uh, feel are reasonable, right? And if you if you think that it's more reasonable, for example, to be able to elect, elect the person who is the second best choice of 95% of the people over 
the the candidate that is the first choice for 55 percent of the people but the last choice for the 45 mm percent -hmm. then you don't want to use the majority criterion and you don't want to use an algorithm system that will conform to the majority criteria majority criterion sorry because <laughs> uh, because because then you won't have that choice right and so so um so, so some ex i i can have some examples that that confirm to that criterion but but then some some of them also also don't so for for example you have you have op approval voting and i'm just going to quote quote here just i just found that now uh, it is ambiguous whether approval voting satisfies the majority criterion approval voting is not ranked uh, is not a ranked voting method whereas the majority criterion has been created for ranked voting methods so so not all um, not all electoral systems can be ranked or assessed according to each of the criteria because you have different inputs that go into into each of the different of electoral course, systems, yeah. and so 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 that that's another complication that you have. Well, uh, so so yeah, to just just move on to to another good criterion in which i think is the monotonicity criterion which says that you can't be able to make someone lose by ranking them higher or to make someone win by ranking them lower right <laughs> so that is kind of counterintuitive as well but uh just just as in the last in the last example we were able to kind of find out find an example where this becomes relevant then you can find you can find a similar scenario where this becomes something that you need to consider i i wouldn't have even considered that <laughs> like ranking someone higher makes them more likely mm -hmm. to lose like mm -hmm. uh, yeah it seems like a strange criteria but okay. so i uh, actually j just on just on uh, the wikipedia article on this criterion the, there is a nice uh, explanation of that okay uh, where you have where you have the center party the right party and the left party and uh, you have voters that submit their preferences for for their first order preferences and second order preferences. And then you have a kind of number of votes and the votes are distributed in, in the way that it would kind of show this example working, right? And then you, you have that scenario laid out where you have a couple of people switching their votes from from uh, from right to left. Well, the, the voters who have their preferences their first preference is being the left left party and the second preference being right party. And if a couple of them switches switches to their first preference being the right party and their second reference being uh, preference being the left party, then if you have those other vote voters and votes aligned in the way that it works out well, then these voters will be able to disadvantage their own preferred preferred party by ranking them by by ranking them higher is is actually is actually the case that it can happen and it's it's a it's difficult to explain when you don't have the table in front of you and kind of just, okay so so i i don't want to really get into that because that's sure. a, it's a bit bit too a bit too awkward to explain and uh in kind of without, I, I get the text. gist of it now <laughs> I, I i know that it's not just mm -hmm. an abstract mm -hmm. thing and that it it can get yeah. into play yeah. in a scenario yeah the, the key thing is that is that uh, is that you can you can um, you can you can have yeah is is ju just that there is there is a scenario where where that can happen and where that becomes an important thing because you don't want to be in a situation where if some part of the voters decide that they want to rank their uh, they they want to make one of one of their parties the preferred party instead of the second preferred party then then that will harm that party instead of helping it right you wouldn't want that so so it it is kind of an obscure criterion because it's not like that's going to happen a lot but it can happen and it it's a real possibility that it happened it's not something out of uh, that you, that you would need kind of ex an extreme example it's something that would be rare okay. but they would be reasonable right so it, it's an example of something that would perhaps be worth keeping an mm. eye out for but yep. may not actually exactly come into play a lot but but it is it is still important because you don't want that to happen course, so, yeah. so it's something that you would probably want to take into account if mm -hmm. you're ranking electoral systems right and then you have uh, for example the participation criterion which um well your electoral system fails the participation criterion if um if abstaining from voting can help your candidate win <laughs> and that can happen as well and that can happen particularly in 
if you, if you have a decision that's being made where there's quorum requirements. So if you if you need if you need more than whatever two thirds of people being present in order for a motion to pass, right? And you want to vote against that motion, and there's they don't have enough people to 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 vote for that mo- uh, they don't they have the majority that would mm-hmm. vote for a motion but they don't have the the quorum present yeah yeah I and see. so if you if I you if you come in if you attend that that meeting and you vote against you will enable them to 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 pass that motion just yeah, because that you voted sense, against yeah. it. if you stayed home you wouldn't have passed even though you were against it mm-hmm. and so so that that is the participation criterion that maybe you want your uh, you want your electoral system to 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 pass so you, so you don't want in between mm-hmm. the kind of 51 percent to the 66 kind of in favor of well that that depends on depends on what the quorum requirement is and okay uh, this is not something that usually happens in electoral systems it's something that that happens in referendums for sure. example and so so you have that in practice affecting kind of different different ways it's not something that would be a major problem in an electoral system because that there's no quorum requirements there, right? And so, yeah, uh, you could you, you could maybe tie it together with um, with the requirements that that five percent. Okay, let, let me let me think for a bit. No, I don't I don't think you can you can easily you can easily make the case that this is really important for your electoral system mm-hmm. outside of very specific circumstances that might be rare uh, but but maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong here but but I think this this particular applies to referendum yeah, and things like I'd that agree, yeah. And, yeah and so so then you have the last one that I want to mention which is reverse reversal symmetry so that's that's also a bit difficult to to imagine but it says that if a is a unique winner and if you were to reverse all the individual rankings of the candidates, then A could not be the winner. And that can also happen under some, some, some electoral systems. Wait, so if so if, if someone wins through a, a certain prefer- mm-hmm. like preferential voting system, but if they reverse the preferences, they mm-hmm. lose then that's a bad thing. Surely that's No 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 no. It's 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 that uh so so it is a criterion, so it it says that you 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 fail at that criterion if that happens. Okay. Right? So so yeah, so yeah. if you if if someone who is a winner in in that electoral system, um, if you if you take if you take the same preferences of those people who who made that person a winner, and then you just flip them, mm-hmm. uh, flip the rankings, and if that person still becomes winner. Okay. Then, then your your electoral system yeah, fails yeah. this this criterion, and that can that can happen. It's just quite quite interesting, quite fun, and like that <laughs> even that can happen, right? So you have a lot of these. You have a lot of these different criteria, and some of them are quite fun to talk about because they seem like that's something that could never happen. But then, mm-hmm. it it sometimes does, and you don't want to be in a situation where where the electorate. And an election turns out in a way that produces some kind of this bizarre result. That like no matter how you look at the results, mm. the same person wins over and over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean that that's that's not exactly what what this I know, is. But yeah, like, if you if you flip it, yeah, like, if you I just mean. scramble it, then, then mm-hmm. that wouldn't be the case. Right. And so so this is this is just something that I wanted to go over because this is very important. Because if you if you want to rank rank electoral systems you need to know according to which criteria you do it. And mm-hmm. then you have loads of criteria and you have to select those which you find important and reasonable um, that you'd want your electoral system to fulfill. And then you have another problem, which is that some of these criteria go against the, against each other. So that actually it's actually impossible for you to uh, fulfill all of those criteria. So... You also need to pick those that that actually work together and that that don't. Yeah, that it's it's about make trade-offs, each other isn't it, between yep. certain criteria rather yep. than um, maximizing all of them. Yep. And so 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 with that out of the way, I wanted to shift a bit to the actual electoral systems and what what their main divisions are. Mm-hmm. So you have yeah, so you have this high-level definition that is not often used but is often but is used um, in relation to 
decision making in general, which is either majoritarian or consensus based. And the idea is that uh, with with some procedures, what it, what you're interested in is just to take the majority point of view, and then that that's the that's that's what's going to happen. And well, that's the one side, and the other side is that you try to in some way involve a lot of the people that are or as as many people that are present as possible. And you could have complete consensus, which would be unanimity. unanimity uh, or you could have some other procedures that could be unanimity minus one or minus two or something like that, just to allow for some you know, more flexibility because then you can't have that one person who holds up. Right? Mm-hmm. And and so so that that division is kind of important as well in in those uh, in those electoral systems because, um, for example, first part the post would be um, a very much majoritarian system. It's it's uh, it's designed to just take uh, whoever is the biggest group. And then those people will win, and the the rest are disregarded, just sure. like broadly. If we, if we just put it crudely, that, yeah. that's, that's in an, an example works. though. Um, we've had it in the UK. Mm. Uh, I think it was in two thousand and five where uh, Labour formed a government, and they only actually got thirty five percent of the vote. So yep. they were in power, yep. even though just over a third of people voted yep. for them. And so consensus based would then be uh, systems that would take into account those people who weren't in the largest group that that would win under the majoritarian system right mm-hmm. they would not not necessarily that they would make them have what they want but that they would at least have some input in in what's going to happen in the end right and so that's that's where you have different algorithm different ways to you know, crunch the numbers to to um, to produce a result that would be more consensual like that in terms of everyone who's present or everyone who voted well, um, then you can you can often repra- rephrase that into uh, plurality and proportional. As I said, you know that that's that's kind of what it what it is often called when you when you apply uh, that division into electoral systems uh, specifically. And so, so plurality again. That's that's the majoritarian system. That's just what it's called. The first past the post would be an example of a plurality based system. And proportional systems then would would be the the ones that that take into account the the proportion. Yeah. I mean, so they would they would normally be more preferential in the kind of in the ballots that voters receive. They would have a preferential Mm -hmm. system that might tally um, up their votes and therefore the percentage of votes for mm-hmm. certain candidates would translate better in that system. Yep, exactly. And so and so then another division that you can have is single winner and multi multi winner. So if you if you take if you, if you just take a, a presidential election, that's a typical single winner election where you need to have by definition a single winner mm-hmm. or a, or a const- uh, or a single constituency where you have a single representative then you send off to to the parliament or something like that so that's a single winner multi winner is something where you where just by voting you you select you, you as the voter can even vote for one or you can vote for multiple it doesn't matter it's diff- different different models but what what is then done is that several winners are selected from it and s- several of them have that position that comes from from the total amounts of votes that they got in some way that depends on how you crunch numbers and so you could say that multi winner is always preferable because then you get you get you get more a larger part of the vote uh, that goes into selecting who the winner actually is but that's sometimes not the case because sometimes you need a single winner such as in the presidential mm-hmm. election you can't like you can't have the two presidents just by the virtue of them being a president and of that office, how, how that works. So that's not sometimes not an option. And sometimes you also want a single winner because if you want a local representative, you want one person to be a local representative uh, because if if you have lo- localities mm-hmm. and you select more local representative out of each small locality, then you can end up with a parliament that has thousands of people in it and that's not very practical, <laughs> right? So so there's there's some limits on, on that as well. And so so and one I know that one option is to to you know, make them a little bit a little bit uh larger to offset that yeah kind of, to make that uh, roughly equal. That was what I was talking about in the yeah, last part. Yeah, exactly. And so 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 but that principle still stands you don't want your parliament to be too big because then it loses yeah. its purpose. 
And so then, then you, you can have uh, either rank voting or approval voting. That's another main division where in rank voting, you rank your candidates. And in approval voting, what you do is basically give either uh, give put an X next to the candidate that you approve of and leave blank the candidate you, you don't disapprove of or the other way around. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The point is that they're not ranked. They're either some of them are 100, some of them are zero. And that, that's it. Right. So that's that's the two kind of differences that the different inputs that you can have. And so according to those electoral systems are then divided. Well and, and that that's that's all that's all important to kind of consider because uh, because it's it's not like you have an option between one voter system uh, voting system and then another one and that would be it just two existing. There's uh, there's like dozens and maybe hundreds uh, and you want to pick the one that fits you the most, but then you can't just make make mm -hmm. an A B choice, right? It's it's not like we have the first past the post versus the single transferable voting system, and that there's the only two options that that we have. And I know that that <laughs> that's not well, um, yeah. But so, so that that um, that there's just to kind of present the the whole kind of range of of how the the systems can vary and what they can can do and what they can't do, right? Mm -hmm. So so now we can go into specific options. So and so we can we can actually start with with single transferable voting. The best because, one because that's it's I know that you you like that. So so, <laughs> so so we can we can start with that as the first example of what other electoral systems can look like, other than what we might know mm -hmm. um, in the Anglophone countries as the first past the post system that that is in place in many of them now. So this is one that is mainly geared towards um, electing legislatures. It mm -hmm. wouldn't really work for, say, a presidential election, yep. um, which I personally believe would be better under a ranked system where you rank your preferences, which seems to work better because then that also eliminates the vote split like I previously mentioned in the first part. Um, in the 1992 election, Wait, where but, but I mean, it's is it is it are they not ranked? So sorry, so sorry to interrupt, but are they not ranked in the single single transfer voting? Yeah, but um, it it wouldn't work because it's uh, constituency based. In that, um, it, it's not geared up for uh, <laughs> for just voting for one person. It's it's a system that. Um, is dependent upon there being a constituency mm -hmm. and you elect multiple members and then based on the percentage of uh, votes for certain people mm -hmm. um, in which the votes are ranked in order of preference um, it draws up multiple candidates who can either be from the same party or different parties mm -hmm. and it allows people um, to not only pick between candidates in the same party, but it also allows them to rank their preferences so they don't have to vote tactically if they, if their first choice is actually unlikely to be elected. Mm -hmm. So it allows for third parties to succeed more in elections than perhaps right. another system, uh, such as first past the post, which is used currently mm -hmm. in the UK and US. So, so j just to just to make that a, a little bit more explicit, mm -hmm. um, what what you do, in in single transferable voting is that you have you have the ballot and on the ballot you rank your choices yeah so you you mm -hmm. number them like yep. one to however yep. many you want exactly and you you get to you can go all the way to every mm -hmm. single candidate or you can number as many as you want yep. and you can say well up to five candidates and then i don't want my vote yep. to be counted yep and so so that so then uh, how the votes are counted is that you you there is a quota that is established according to a, a formula that it's not it's not important here but but you have you have a, a quota that if if the candidate passes the quota then they get elected but mm -hmm. if they don't pass the quota which means that they would not be popular among the majority of like a lot of people then then no one no one wins and if 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 no one wins like that then then you uh, eliminate the the last the last person in the race and take their votes and add them to to the to the totals yeah add the, add, add the second choice uh, from from the people who had the one who is eliminated as their first choice mm -hmm. right and so so and you do that uh, you do that repeatedly as long as you as long as no one has reached that quota 
right? and and when you have that per first candidate reaching that quota then then that gets taken away and then you you need you you do that process again until you have enough people reaching that quota that uh well how many you want in mm -hmm. that constituency which can be for example like three in in one constituency sure. right it certainly sounds a lot more complicated than perhaps other electoral systems which i will concede like using first past the post logistically it is very easy because you've yeah. just got to see the cross and the piece of paper mm -hmm. that's that's easy to do logistically but the, the, i feel like the the sacrifice of uh, the time in which people have to spend to count the votes is worth the increased proportionality of the final outcome um, because the the actual percentage of votes correspond far better to the elected representatives mm -hmm. in a legislature and and so so then um you, you said you said that single transfer voting is is mainly a concept that applies for for constituencies right yeah. and then of course that gets aggregated to the national level mm -hmm. uh, but uh, a special case of or what I call this I think it's a special case of single transferable voting is uh, is the instant instant run of voting which is sometimes called the alternative vote which mm -hmm. is which is a vote for one uh, one winner one winner then that uh, Whereas in the in the broader case, you can have multiple winners in the same constituency, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so in the instant run of voting, you instead have, uh, you instead do, you do the same process that that I just described, but you do that just for that one winner. So, so you have you have a certain threshold that you need your candidate to reach, and if no one reaches that in the first round, quote round, quote unquote round, then then you you eliminate the last one and you you add you add those votes to to the previous ones according to those those voters second choices and you do that as long as you need until one one mm -hmm. one of the candidates reaches that threshold and for that um alternative mm -hmm. vote system there was actually a referendum in 2011 mm -hmm. in which um in the UK yeah it was in the UK um which was by the coalition government, which was both conservative and liberal democrat, and the liberal democrats wanted uh, electoral reform t towards a more preferential system, and the conservatives were perfectly fine with first past the post because they stood to benefit, yep. and they they get a far larger share, perhaps a, a disproportionate share, it would be fair to say, um, of seats in parliament through that system. So they didn't want to change it. So rather than uh, perhaps uh, denying the Lib Dems altogether, they said, okay, we'll let you have alternative vote, which they weren't necessarily a big fan about because it, it has its flaws. Um, and I think that also reflected in the vote because mm -hmm. only 32% of people voted in favour for it, whereas 67.9 voted against it mm -hmm. to keep first past the post. I think even the Lib Dems were kind of a bit lukewarm about uh, voting in favour of this. Yeah, and I mean, uh, it's it's not like instant runoff voting or alternative vote. That's it, that that is already used in some countries. It's used in Australia. That's kind of the most famous example. Mm -hmm. It's used in in some other countries as well. And so so you have this in place, and it's it's not it's not something that will be experimental, right? It's not like that. Yeah, it's it's and, still a system that's used mm -hmm. around the world. And it's it, it's it's also something that mitigates some of the problems of mm -hmm. first past the post, but ha also also has a lot of the problems that 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 first past the post has so so it mitigates some of them it's not as far as i know it's not worse than first past the post in in, yeah. in anything but it's not better in many things yeah it only is, in some things it, it creates as uh, disproportionate outcomes as first past the post does really um in in terms of the national election like you still have that disconnect between the percentage of votes uh, nationally and the the seats in parliament and it still has that same kind of deviation to the uh two main parties that you find in first past the post mm -hmm. and so so then another example that I, that I want to look at is mixed member proportional voting which is uh, sometimes called something else in in britain because everything is called something else in britain and i i know it is just mms that's um, how i learned about it but uh maybe maybe um that's a language barrier between the English speaking world and the rest of the world. <laughs> but <laughs> sorry. That's all right. <laughs> You're forgiven. So mixed member proportional voting is is uh, for example used in New Zealand, right? 
And mm -hmm. what it is, is that you, it's quite easy to actually take a first pass the post system and switch it to this system, because what you need to do is logistically quite, quite easy. And what you do is you take, uh, you double the size of the, of the parliament. Which is which might be difficult when your parliament is over six hundred people, but yeah. Uh, but it, when it's smaller, then it's easier. Also, like you can change it later. I mean, in the stuff. UK, it would be one thousand yeah, three hundred yeah, no, representatives. Really realistic. But but for some other countries, it might be. And so, uh, so then half of the seats come from come from constituencies from first past the post elections as they as they have. Like, that doesn't change. But then you add the second half, and those those second that second half gets elected from uh, in kind of a con compens compensatory manner, um, kind of together with 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 the first half, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I remember this. Right. It's, um... And so, and so, so what you do as as uh, as the voter is that you vote um, you vote for one candidate out of the mm -hmm. list of candidates, and you vote for a party out of mm -hmm. the list of parties. And what happens behind the scenes after you vote is that first the individuals, the individual candidates, are can you know, round it up all all their all their votes are, are counted and first past the post is applied and you have half of the parliament being filled in this way based on first past the post but then the second second part is is where people had uh, had crossed the, their favorite parties and that that gets um, that gets rationed like the the rest of the parliaments the rest of the seats in parliament get rationed based on who is the most underrepresented in the in the first past the post half that's already been assigned right and so 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 if you have if you have one party that has like whatever is like 40 percent of the of the national vote but is uh but has 70 percent of the seats mm -hmm. um out, then, out of that half then they wouldn't get any um of the additional uh, party list mm -hmm. but, uh, seats, or or they might get a few, but exactly. less so exactly. than other parties. And, and so, so you look at all the parties and you see which which is the one that ha that is the most underrepresented, and then you then you add a seat to it, mm -hmm. and then you do it again, and you and and because because those percentages changes as as you add as you add those seats to to, to the parties, then then you keep adding the, those according to the party that is always the, the mm -hmm. most underrepresented. And then when you come to a point where no one is underrepresented, then you stop that. So that seems relatively good for proportionality, but in terms of actually uh, having local representatives that correspond to your views, mm -hmm. these additional list candidates, yep. do, they, do they actually uh, correspond to local areas? I imagine that they wouldn't. They would just take be people that were kind of parachuted in. Yep. I think the term is just to kind of fulfill these quotas mm -hmm. so it, it just allows um parties to say well we we know that we're going to be somewhat underrepresented so we can guarantee we're going to elect these uh people mm -hmm. as well so it also means yes. that um if if people who are popular within a party but are not popular with the electorate mm -hmm. a party could just put them at the top of this list yes. and say well we can we can get them in anyway. We don't need to actually run them in a seat because they're not going to get it, but mm -hmm. we can get this person in. So if they're unpopular yep. for any reason with the public, but they're, they're still in favor in the party, they're still going to be the thing is that the, represented. The thing is that the lists are public up front. Mm -hmm. you, you, need, you, need to, sure. you need to say before the election what, mm -hmm. what, your, what, what your list is going to be. And so if you have those, if you have those uh, unpopular people on the top of the list sure. uh, you you will you will drive away some of some of the voters mm -hmm. and not from some of your better candidates because you, yeah, of course. you because they can still vote for, vote for mm -hmm. them in those constituencies but you will have fewer votes uh, in the if you if you put up mm -hmm. uh, on, on the top your uh, your unpopular candidates and so so then if if you do that and you lose some some votes because of that you will lose that kind of advantage mm -hmm. of being able to put anyone in there because you won't actually be over underrepresented because people will be voting for you less. I've um, actually seen the ballot papers for mm. these uh, systems and I know that it's just the name of the political party. Yes. So although I certainly feel that, that um, people would be put off by these undesirable candidates, I feel like it would be perhaps easier to get them in mm -hmm. because 
when it actually comes to the ballots, it's yep. just the name of the party and people don't see the list. So if they haven't mm -hmm. gone to the trouble of reading this list, then perhaps it yep. might make it a little bit easier. That, is that true. was um, the point I was trying to make, but I didn't uh, <laughs> add that caveat, I suppose. No, that, that is definitely true. I mean, this, this is this is this is a problem but then of course on the other side you you always have that risk of of alienating some of your voters or maybe a lot of them right mm -hmm. and so you don't really i guess it's a bit it's a bit complicated for you if if you want to be sneaky like that as a, as the party mm -hmm. but but it is a possibility of course it, it's something that that is is not is less transparent than, than sure. if you vote for a candidate so, yeah. directly to bring things back to single transferable okay, vote, um, that's one of the, the strengths of that voting system in that all of the people who end up in the, the parliament or legislature are directly elected by people. There's, there's no yep. uh, shortlist and although people might be voting for the party, they're going to be in single transferable vote. They deliberately vote for specific candidates and if there are candidates in a particular party that are especially unpopular, well, people can still vote for other candidates in that party yep. and perhaps candidates in another party over um, this unpopular person. Mm -hmm. So they, they get a, a better representative overall from the view of the voter. Yep, I agree that, uh, that from, this, uh, from this point of view in this particular... Mm -hmm. From from this particular consideration, single transferable voting is is superior to to, to sure. uh, mixed member proportional voting. But and so uh, the the last one that I wanted to go in a bit more detail is is approval voting, which is um, which is a system where you uh, where you have a list of candidates and you you make a cross next to the candidate where where you approve of them. That's what I already mentioned uh, mm -hmm. in the beginning. And you leave out those candidates that you don't approve of, or you can be that way. It can be disapproval voting, which where you cross the candidates that you disapprove of. It doesn't matter. It's just reverse. But uh, and and so from from those from those candidates, then based on how many seats you want to fill, you just you just take the ones that have the most approval crosses, right? And and that that's quite easy to do. Well, you might say that that's superior to to one system or another, but the problem with this is that it's a tactical nightmare. Is uh, if you if you actually think it through, what that produces in terms of people strategizing and and deciding on on who they're going to actually give it, give the cross to and who they they won't, mm -hmm. uh, they won't they will going to uh, they will going to be strategizing about about that. So they will they will take into consideration what other people are voting like, and so they will. They will try to put their best candidate forward, maybe at the expense of of the next best, even though the next best might be closest. If they believe that that enough people will be voting for the next best as well, and so so that creates kind of this game of 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 like chickens, like who who's <laughs> gonna chicken out chicken out the first, right? Because if you have so an example, if you have like a political compass, whatever, and you have uh, two candidates that are quite close together. And then one candidate mm -hmm. that is quite far away from them, and if you have that, then and and for example, you have you have majority of voters who would like one of one of these two who are like mm -hmm. in that space and not in that space, and the minority of voters who are in that space. Well, then if you have these two these two candidates, well, their their voters might say, okay, I want I want one of them over the other, and therefore I'm just gonna give the approval to to the one and not mm -hmm. not to the other because i want that one no that one is slightly better than the other even though the third one is mm -hmm. much worse and then then the voters for the other one will say the same thing they will say okay i, I, I would i would rather i would rather the one that is slightly closer to me so i'm i'm just going to leave out the cross for the other one as well because i'm just going to vote for my the best one for me and then and so and they will their incentives are aligned so that they will do this to the point where none of those candidates will will receive enough votes to be the third one, and the third one wins. That's yeah. further away from. So that. it 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 splits the vote in a way similar to first yeah. past the post. Exactly. In that you you've got to vote tactically, yep. especially when candidates are close together ideologically or yep. in policy. And and you, you. Could, you could you could say okay, if they're close together, it's not that important. 
and, and that like people should get over themselves and just just get the cross mm-hmm. to both of them but like that's not what people are going to do I mean, people are perfectionists often uh, or they will be overconfident in terms of of uh, how much of lead lead those two candidates have over over that uh, that third one things like that right so it, so it's natural for people to want to maximize their utility exactly, and exactly. When, when it comes so to you voting, can't expect them not to yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so, so, so things like that can happen quite frequently and quite easily in approval voting. So that it's, it might be an improvement in some ways over first past the post, but it's not exactly an improvement because there's similar problems. And it can generate a lot of different different issues, different tensions in in its own right. Yeah, it certainly sounds right. like it. And so, so. Um, so last, I, want, I just wanted to mention one website that, that Josh found that, that is the electoralreform.org.uk that lists quite, quite uh, in a quite nice way the types of voting systems, well, only some of them because, as I said, there's dozens, maybe hundreds. It's a uh, UK-specific website, yes. that's why. Yeah, and so, so it, has, um, it has these kind of little snapshots of what each voting system is like. It has nine, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it has nine. And so, so, so you, can, you can see a little bit of detail about each of those. And they're, like, they're, they're, they're an advocacy website, so they're not really focused on, on too much thoroughness or... or uh, being very specific about things Mm -hmm. so they they have three criteria proportionality voter choice and local representation according to which they rank those systems but these criteria are kind of vague and they don't really say how they're assessed so it doesn't really matter i mean it's it's just a good snapshot of what what those systems can be and how they differ it doesn't matter because they support single transferable vote (laughs) which is the right choice of course Uh, yeah 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 thought you'd say that (laughs) (laughs) i couldn't resist i'm sorry no that's all right it's all right. I mean, I'm not. I'm. Uh, I. I. I'm not opposed to single transfer of vote or anything like that. Like I think. That, I think that's. Uh, it, that's can be one of the better ones. Even though we yeah. need to first define according to which criteria we're going to rank them. So, which we haven't done. Sure. So, so just to conclude the, this this whole thing because uh, it's been quite a lot of information and we've been talking about, I mean, jumping here and there, for, mm-hmm. uh, every now and then, and so. To conclude, there's uh, no single best system just by the virtue of you being able to choose different criteria and some of the criteria can't can't be fulfilled at the same time and are mutually exclusive. And so you you can't fulfill any criteria that you come up with. And so, so it just depends on the criteria that you choose. You might think that some of the criteria are more important than others and then you'll want your system to satisfy those criteria. And so... so uh, that's 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 just uh, the the because because of that you can't just say that one is one is the best you before just actually agreeing on the criteria sure. and you you could you could say uh, well almost everyone would agree on these three or four criteria and then if everyone does then we can say this this one is the best mm-hmm. and you can you can definitely do that and people can do that I, I disagree <laughs> um I, I can categorically say that a single transferable vote is definitely the best and every other system is rubbish. That is mine. <laughs> no, um, being being serious though, um, I feel that my the reason that I'm such an advocate for it is because it prioritises um, competition between uh, representatives and free competition. Obviously, there's more innovation. It's very... <laughs> economic argument but it is true and also voters get better choices overall and alongside that there's a bit better representation um than perhaps other systems if you order it within 30 minutes you'll receive a new set of kitchen knives <laughs> i i mean i'm not being paid by this website no, i'm i'm um that that's not, that wasn't serious. I mean, I I, I agree <laughs> yeah. that obviously you won't get kitchen knives, but at the same time, like I I agree I that mind, so. that a lot of uh, like you have these advantages that that are there and that that are quite tangible in comparison mm-hmm. to first past the post, definitely. So so it's a uh, it's not something that I would dispute. I think that you you it's fair for you to advocate that like this. It's not not something <laughs> that would be would be crazy or bad or something like that. I know nothing I, like that. I don't think it's something that just uh, generally speaking, that people tend to think about. Mm. Like, uh, it's a, a very technical thing to look at the exactly. voting system. So most people who actually do take part in the system don't uh, question how mm. it's formulated. And, I mean, to most people, the person who gets the most votes winning 
is a very intuitive thing. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't seem mm. that bad, but um, when that is tabulated on a national level, it doesn't seem to translate quite as well um, to actually representing the views of the people that the representatives are meant to represent. Mm. And I think that's uh, the, the crux of why I'm such a strong advocate for yeah. this system. I can understand it completely. Mm -hmm. And I just want to add that beyond just maths and, and how that works out, the electoral systems can produce different cultures and it they can affect things outside of politics. Right? Mm -hmm. So so you you will have different behaviors and different kind of psychological phenomena that, that will that will result from that just just because politics is such an important part in of of yeah our our societies right i think um that particularly uh, apathy towards mm. politics with um voting systems where you have to vote tactically where your votes might not count or where it may not actually amount to anything is probably counterproductive and perhaps if you want to uh, get more people to participate in politics or take a greater understanding or should I say have a greater understanding of politics then it would be beneficial to have a system where people actually feel like they're going to get something out of turning up mm. to vote when there are a lot of people who live in uh, constituencies where they may be in the minority they know they are so what's the point in even turning out to vote Mm. And I think that's a very tangible thing that many people feel that if they go to the polls, what, well, what's the point? I'm not going to be able to get the candidate who I want. So it's just a symbolic gesture, really. Mm. And and also just even be, even even beyond that, in like life outside of politics, you can you can have you can have electoral systems affecting that. So if you have if you have first past the post system that where where what it is is. Exactly how we talked about yesterday, um, kind of this this kind of sports match, right? It mm -hmm. will create kind of, kind of teams uh, in society and different identities around it, right? So it can produce like these different different things, and it's it's not just something that occurs in one system or another. And so, because you have these things outside of politics that are also influenced by electoral systems, weirdly enough, then you you might, if you decide to switch to another electoral system than what you have now, you might. You might gain something in electoral politics in in representation or something like that. Might you might also lose something elsewhere, right? And so you, it it doesn't automatically mean that if the system is mathematically mathematically be better according to a lot of these criteria or some mm -hmm. some that you choose that it is that this is going to be the only only effect that it will have because it will also have an effect outside of politics. Sure. So that's the uh, that's the last thing that I kind of wanted to mention. Yeah. And. That I think if you are perhaps in the UK and you vote Labour or Conservative, it certainly makes some sense to preserve first past the post, although I, I don't necessarily agree with you. <laughs> um, from a tactical standpoint, it maximises the number of seats that they get. And the same goes for in the United States, where Democrat and Republicans uh, get the same kind of uh, national boost overall relative to the proportion of votes. Yep, exactly. Right, and so I think I'd, I'd end it there because that's kind of the takeaway that I wanted to mention at the end, that if, you, if you're thinking about changing politics, also think about how it's going to change things outside of politics. That's always a good point. Yep. All right. So Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. And you can find us at lotuseaters.com, and if you like this, you can support us and become a premium member as well.